here's another parametric surface because we have two inputs, phi and theta, and, uh, and three outputs, an x, a y, and a z here. So there's x, y, and z. So we can think about this as a parametric surface. Um, first, just to find the differential, dr is going to be a vector of changes, right? The change in x, the change in y, and the change in z. And since this, this uh, function has three inputs, or three outputs and two inputs, it's going to be a three by two matrix. One row for the x information, one row for the y information, one for the z information, one row for each output, and one column for partials with respect to phi and partials with respect to theta. So if we set it up d phi, d theta, then the things in the first column end up multiplying d phi, so they should be derivatives with respect to phi. The things in the second column end up multiplying d theta, so they should be derivatives with respect to theta. So we get the total derivative by looking at that. So let's see, the derivative of x with respect to phi, um, the derivative of sine phi is cosine phi, so we get 3 cosine phi cosine theta. Of course, the derivative of x with respect to theta, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we have negative 3, I wish I'd given myself more space, negative 3 sine phi sine theta. Um, the derivative of y with respect to phi would be 3 cos phi sine theta, and the derivative of y with respect to theta would be 3 sine phi cos theta. And finally, the derivative of z with respect to phi would be negative 3 sine phi. The derivative of z with respect to th theta, well, z doesn't depend on theta, so that derivative is 0. <coughs> okay, so um, there's our differential, right? It tells us if we make small changes in the inputs, approximately how will, how mu how will the outputs change. So that's our differential. So if we had measured phi and theta, but we had some uncertainty in the values of phi and, th and theta, a little error in phi and a little error in theta, then we could do this matrix multiplication to, to approximate the error in x, y, and z. Or we could find the tangent space, so let's do that in this case. Find the tangent space. Since this is a surface, the tangent space would have to be a plane. It's going to be a flat surface. Find the tangent space at, um, let's do it at phi equals um, pi force and at theta equals um, pi force. Okay, in that case, let's see, when phi equals pi force and theta equals pi force, then um, the sine and the cosine are both root 2 over 2. So if you take sine of, sine, root 2 over 2 is root 2 over 2, you get 2 over 4, that's 1 half. So the x value is 3 halves. The y value, um, sine of pi force and sine of pi force, again, that's, um, that's 1 half. So we have the y value is 3 halves. And the z value is 3 times the cosine of pi force is root 2 over 2. So, three, so z is 3 times root 2 over 2. So we can find now the, the equation of the tangent space. So we think about the change in x. That would be x minus 3 halves. The change in y, y minus 3 halves, and the change in z, z minus 3 root 2 over 2, is going to be equal to our total derivative matrix evaluated at our particular location. Um, cos and phi times cos and theta, since both angles are pi fours, that's going to make 1 half. So we have a slope of 3 halves and then negative 3 halves for the slope here. This number turns out to be 3 halves, and that number turns out to be 3 halves because root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 is 2 over 4, that's 1 half. And then we have negative 3, the sine of pi force is root 2 over 2. So negative 3 root 2 over 2 and 0 times our changes in phi. So phi is moving away from pi force and theta is moving away from pi force. So we get now um, <clears throat> these equations we find that x is equal to 3 halves of phi minus pi force um, minus 3 halves of theta minus pi force um, plus 3 halves and y is equal to 3 halves of phi minus pi force and plus 3 halves of theta minus pi force plus 3 halves and z is equal to 
um, negative 3 root 2 over 2 times phi minus pi fourths plus 3 root 2 over 2. Let's move those over. Again, we have this surface. So the tangent space is a tangent surface, or since it's got to be linear, it's got to be a flat plane. Let's graph the two together just to see how the linearization, this simple linear approximation, resembles at least near pi force uh, for phi and pi force for theta, at least at, that, at this location, how it resembles um, the graph of the actual surface. So both of them are parametric surfaces. We'll just plot them in maple. So we can use plot 3D. So P1 will be plot 3D. Um, my function was for x3 times the sine of phi times the cosine of theta. And y was similar, 3 times the sine of phi times the sine of theta. And my z was 3 times the cosine of phi. So there are my parametric equations. Um, we'll go from 0 to pi halves. Um, for x and y, I'm uh, no, sorry, this is, this is phi equals 0 to pi halves and um, theta equals 0 to pi halves. Okay, so there's that equation. And it will be similar for the linearization, right? Only for the linearization, the function for x is 3 halves phi minus pi force. Okay, so 3 halves times phi minus pi force um, minus 3 halves times theta minus pi force um, plus 3 halves, right? Plus 3 halves. And um, the y was almost exactly the same, so I'll copy it and paste it in here. The only difference was the, with the y was that the, the rate of change in the theta direction was 3 halves. And then on the z, the z was somewhat similar. Huh? We had 3 times the square root of 2 over 2 times phi minus pi four. So the derivative in the theta direction was 0. And then I think we had 3 times 3 times the square root of 2 over 2. OK, so same ranges will work. Let me just check this. Oh, negative, negative 3 root 2 over 2 and plus. Yeah, so that should be negative 3 root 2 over 2. OK, once we have those two plots created, we can display both parametric surfaces together in one plot. Mm, I'm missing uh, okay, an extra parenthesis there. Uh oh, another extra parenthesis. Uh, another extra parenthesis. Okay, now it's happy. There we go. Ah, we see, yeah, this was a parameterization of a sphere. You kind of recognize the polar coordinates of the form. So the actual surface was a sphere, and this is the tangent plane when the tip out angle is pi force and uh, the angle theta is pi force.